Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs into the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get the regular and variant editions of John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com today. One of my viewers sent me a question on Facebook, and I can't answer that question on YouTube publicly, because if I were to make that video publicly, it would be flagged and deleted for so-called hate speech. So in this Patreon-exclusive video, I'm going to try to answer that viewer's question, and it goes as follows. He asked me, why do I think Jewish people move towards creating generational wealth and black people move towards the illusion of wealth? Well, I believe Jewish people move towards creating generational wealth because that was their plan from minute one when they got to the United States. Now, most Jewish people who came to the United States, some of them were poor, some of them had some money, but many of them came to the United States with skills, and because they came to the United States with money and skills, their primary focus was on building businesses here in the United States. Now, one of the things that the Jewish people did here in the United States when they were building businesses, they were looking to gain economic power by cornering certain industries and cornering certain marketplaces. And when they cornered certain industries and certain marketplaces, what they did was cut people out so that they could maintain power and control over those industries and marketplaces. And when they did that, they were creating the foundation for wealth because they, one, had the skills to create those fixed tangible assets that would have value, and two, they were creating things that were fixed and tangible that had value to others. And that's what led to them creating that foundation for the wealth that would be passed down from generation to generation. And when they created those fixed tangible assets and created and cornered those marketplaces, they had a position of leverage, and they used that position of leverage to gain control because they knew that with that economic power, they would have the political power, and with the political power they got by being able to use their economic power and the cornering of those industries, they would be able to control those politicians and they would be able to create policies to protect their institutions and keep that wealth being passed down from generation to generation. So they came here with a plan to create that wealth from day one. And once they create, cornered those industries and marketplaces, they then had politicians coming to them and then they had the, then once they got those politicians on their side, they got those politicians to go out here and do the work of creating policies to protect their institutions and their marketplaces so that others would not be able to come in. So that's how they created that generational wealth from generation to generation because when you have that economic base that generates you revenue, when you control marketplaces, you control those tangible assets that are not only producing those products and services, you are, you are controlling everything that creates the money there and it has value. So that allows you to be able to make money for yourself, teach a culture to the next generation of why what you're doing is important, and then have that generation inherit what you get and then understanding why it's valuable, protect and preserve it, and protect the political institutions that allow you to continue generating that wealth. Now, when it comes down to black people, I believe the reason why they move towards this illusion of wealth that he is asking me about is because most black people, they started out focusing on creating wealth. However, they ran into numerous obstacles thrown at them by white supremacists. And the first obstacle black people ran into as they were trying to build wealth like towns such as Rosewood and Black Wall Street, was they ran into terrorism from the Ku Klux Klan. Now, the Ku Klux Klan, whenever they saw black people gaining economic power, they would burn down black-owned stores, they would burn down black-owned businesses, they would lynch 
black business owners, and when black people tried to gain political power through economic power, oftentimes, again, they were lynched and terrorized by your white racists who were a part of the Ku Klux Klan. So that discouraged a lot of black people from trying to seek out getting economic power. And because they stopped seeking out economic power or looking to corner certain industries or corner certain marketplaces, they couldn't control those industries and marketplaces to gain access to wealth. Because again, in order to gain access to wealth, you have to have an enclave of individuals who are or building businesses that can gain economic power and be able to go out here and use that economic power to gain political power to protect your economic assets and your economic interests. Unfortunately, the wealthy here in the United States, they didn't want to see black people gain that type of economic power because they did not want to compete with black people for the economic resources or the economic marketplace. So what they did was undermine the black economy and prevent it from gaining any traction. Now this is very different than what went on with the Asian community. The Asian community was able to come here and create the same wealth that the Jewish community was able to do because they didn't have to deal with terrorism from the Ku Klux Klan. But your black people had to deal with that terrorism from the Ku Klux Klan and they also had to deal with the division that came in the black community. And this division was one of the things that led to the creation of the illusion of wealth. Because in the times of W.E.B. Du Bois and your Booker T. Washington, we had two different frames of thought. Now, your Booker T. Washington wanted black people to go into the skilled trades, and he thought that if black people learned how to work with their hands and build things, they would be able to generate their own wealth. Unfortunately, a lot of people took on W.E.B. Du Bois' idea of the Talented Tenth, believing that if 10% of the black community were educated, that 10% would come back to the black community. Unfortunately, what happened was we had a great divide, and most people took the side of W.E.B. Du Bois, thinking that if 10% of black people go out here and get college degrees, and get jobs working for white people, they will be able to go out here and not only generate wealth, but then come back and educate the other 90%. And what happened was that 10% of black people, yes, they got their education, yes, they got their job with white people and white companies, and what happened was they were a part of a class called the black bourgeoisie or the boule, and those people, yes, they, they, gener they were very, they made a lot of money, but they did not generate any wealth. What they generated was an illusion of wealth because they were considered high value people by white people. And because they had high value in the eyes of white people, I mean, black, of, of white people, black people saw them as being wealthy because they were getting the attention and approval of white people. And because those black people were getting that attention from white people, that's what made people think that these people were big deals and think that they had some sort of wealth. But in many cases, they were just upper middle class and they had no real economic power because they did not control any industries, they did not control any businesses, they did not control any marketplaces nor did they corner any sort of industries or trades to make sure that only black people worked in those industries or trades. So these black people, yes, they were a 10% group that was prominent and they had a wealth of popularity, but they had no economic power. Now, this group was a, what 90% of black people aspired to be like. Unfortunately, what they didn't understand was all those people had was social currency. And this is one of the things that I believe undermined the civil rights movement when it started in the late 50s, because as the civil rights movement went on and black people were fighting for their equal rights, they were not fighting for economic power. The main re thing, reason why they were fighting for so-called civil rights was for so-called equality so that they could go into white-owned businesses and white-owned stores 
and be able to spend their black dollars with white people. And this was also making people move towards that illusion of wealth because they thought if they were able to go to the white store, this meant that they had just as much value as those boule or talented 10th blacks and that they were moving towards gaining some sort of empowerment. Unfortunately, what they were getting was social currency. And again, social currency has no value because social currency is something intangible. And because social currency is intangible, it is something that you can't hold on to. And that's, some, that's the reason why social currency has no value. But a lot of those black people thought that that had value and they thought because a white person was letting them come to their stores, a white person was letting them work at their job, a white person was paying attention to them, a white person was approving of them, That's they thought that that was some sort of wealth. Unfortunately, that social currency is why the black community went into decline, because as black people started looking for acceptance with white people, they started to devalue their own wealth, generational wealth in black-owned businesses, and those black-owned businesses, in many cases, went out of business by the early 1980s or early 1990s because so many black people were looking towards gaining their economic daily bread from white people that they weren't thinking about taking over certain industries or cornering certain marketplaces where they could create fixed, tangible products or have the infrastructure to create fixed tangible products, things that would have economic value and things that would allow them to gain not only economic leverage, but political leverage as well. Because when you can go out here and you have certain skill sets, like Booker T. Washington was trying to give black people with his Tuskegee institution, and you have people who have, who have only those skills and master those skills, and keep those skills in hand as related to their group and protect those skills like the Jews did with tailoring and many other different businesses like entertainment and the arts. They controlled and cornered the marketplaces for those businesses, made it where they were the only ones you could go get these products from. And in order to buy those products, you had to be sanctioned by them in order to buy them and in order to be able to do business with them, you, they had to do things on their terms. Moreover, because they were such a valuable asset to the community, they politicians came to them, and the politicians wanted to get money from them. They wanted to get influence from them. And they what they wanted to do was, what the Jews did was they created policy to protect themselves by having that politician in place. And that politician, in, in tandem, as giving them that protection, then gave them programs and security to secure everything that they needed. So they were able to protect their infrastructure and their institutions. And that's something black people have not been able to do due to the terrorism, again, they encountered with the Ku Klux Klan and the bombings and destructions of places like Black Wall Street, the lynchings. This was something that led to black people. They didn't, instead of them, and then the whole divide, again, with W.E.B. Du Bois telling them about the talented 10th and becoming educated and looking for jobs with white people, that's what led to the transition to this illusion of wealth, and which is social currency, and this whole move for social acceptance. And the social acceptance is the illusion of wealth, because most black people think being accepted by white people and getting the attention and approval of white people is something that has more value than financial money. And they're chasing a this social status more than building economic wealth. So that's something that is why the black community is a mess these days, because black people are more interested in social currency than economic currency. And in fact, they will sacrifice economic currency in order to get likes on things like Facebook and Instagram, or to just get people saying that their shoes are fly. This is why people will spend $500 on a pair of rare Air Jordan sneakers rather than take $500 and take it to the bank 
or buy a savings bond or invest it in the stock market because for them, social currency has the highest value and actual currency has low value because for them, money is supposed to buy social currency. And again, that, that comes from the whole idea that if they go out here and have money, a lot of black people, some of them fear that if they have money, they're going to lose it or they fear that somebody's going to take it because they fear either the police are going to take it or there's some type of somebody's going to rob them. And again, they move towards this illusion of wealth for social currency because they have not been taught how to value themselves or to see a value in being black or see a value in blackness because in order to go out here and again, create wealth, you have to see a value in self, see a value in what you want to do, see a value in your institutions, and make efforts to protect and preserve your institutions and corner marketplaces where you own most of the skills. So you have to see value from day one. And the big problem with black people is we only see a value in white. And that's why we have black people looking for the illusion of wealth, which is white acceptance, instead of looking to create actual wealth, which is fixed, tangible economic assets that have economic value based on their demand and the demand of community, of the community and communities here and abroad. So if you want to see me do another Patreon exclusive video like this, you can make a donation to my Patreon in five to ten dollars and I'll be glad to make any exclusive video for you. So that's all I have to say for this Patreon exclusive video. If you want to pick up some of my HJS Direct publications like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the Smithsterella trilogy, you may do so by clicking the links to Amazon.com on this page or any other page on, on the Patreon exclusives. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, ISIS, all that glitters. The goddess next door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new ISIS series adventure. Get ISIS, all that glitters, paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.